welcome everybody to today's seminar on our Dormacaba touchless actuators for low energy operators. My name is Paul. I'm uh, moderating and running the cameras behind the scenes here for our learning leader, Chris Freeman. Chris has been with Dormacaba in terms of the industry for over 35 years. He's our learning leader with his specialties in industry expertise in technical services, uh, templating and installation instruction, and channel and field training. He also brings in product research and development and distribution expertise. So let's welcome Chris for today's um, class session here for HL Flake and Banner Solutions. We thank you for joining. And Chris, um, I see that you have a you have a little ladder there in the studio. So take it away and explain. We're not selling ladders, but we are selling low energy operators, which ladders come in handy to access. So, uh, so anyway, um, my name is Chris Freeman, and I'm um, learning leader here with Norma Caba. And, and what we're going to talk about today is the um, the ability to turn standard openings into touchless openings. That's what we want to. That's what we want to highlight. That's what we want to um, give you the opportunity to go out, uh, earn some additional income by not only. Uh, as a typical locksmith doing the normal locksmithing things, but there's, since you're working on the opening anyway, there's a lot of um, other things that you can do to the opening, and one of those would be to uh, convert to a touchless solution. So um, it's all the, all the rage right now, and fortunately you have access to one of the best products on the market to make that happen. And that, uh, that leads me to the, uh, the low energy operator that we're going to talk about today is the, the Dormacaba ED50LE low energy operator. So, uh, you know, this type of an operator, first of all, let's talk about what type of an operator it is. Um, the first, first thing you need to know is there's two different types of low energy operators. You have power operated pedestrian doors and you have the uh, low energy operators which are two totally different standards. So one is uh, 15610 which is um, the, the types of operators you would associate like with a uh, an airport or a, a grocery store uh, where you approach the door and the door you know swings open quickly. Um, they would have all the sensors to uh, stop it in case somebody was in front of it. Uh, and it all happens passively. You don't have to do anything. You simply approach the door and it opens for you. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the uh, low energy type operator. So that would be ANSI A15619. So it's a different standard. And on the, under that standard, the, uh, the speeds and the forces that the operator are regulated and that's where the inherent safety comes from. So the type of operator we're talking about today is under ANSI A15619. So that's the type of operator it is in the first place. Uh, so let's just have a look at the operator itself. Again we're talking about the ED, um, the ED50LE and the first thing that you notice about this operator is the fact that it's a, a very compact, very uh, narrow profile. It's about two and three quarter inches tall, projects out about five and a half inches from the frame. And this one here, uh, this particular model, has a cover that's about 34 inches long. So that's essentially about as uh, it covers the entire door on a 36 inch uh, wide door. So, uh, so one of the things you'll notice is that you can install this in a lot of places where you can't install a full-size um, cover uh, operator because a lot of those are, you know, five and a half inches square, or maybe even uh, six inches square, and they go uh, generally about 37 and a half inches long. Um, they go from jam to jam, and it's a big, big box. So um, there's a lot of situations where you just don't want an operator that that big clogging up the opening and uh, the ED50LE lends itself nicely to just about any architectural opening because it'll fit anywhere you want to put it. So that's number one. Number two, um, with this operator, it's very quiet. Okay, very quiet. So it's one of the quietest operators that are available. 
and it is the type of operator that uh, it's very smooth, it's very quiet, so it doesn't bring, um, draw, draw a lot of attention to itself. So, so that's one of the, the big uh, features that people like about it is it's, it's, you don't even realize it's there, you don't even notice that it's there. So, um, so that's a big selling feature that you can really use this just about anywhere. You can use it in a, you know, in a quiet environment, in an office environment, in a you know, theater setting, in a hospital setting, uh, or even in a residential setting. Um, you know, it, would, uh, it would not draw attention to itself. So that's a big uh, selling feature with the ED50 LEs. Another feature with this operator is when you don't activate the door and you just open the door manually, if you just open the door manually, it feels like a door closer. Okay, so people don't even realize, people don't even realize that it's a, a automatic operator when you walk through the door manually just because it's a um, very smooth feel. It doesn't have a, you know, there's some operators when you walk through them, it, it's hard to open, you know. You got a gear train that you have to wind up, and uh, and with this type of an operator, it just it just feels like a door closer. And that was the real uh, the real intent behind the operator is to make it feel like a door closer when you don't uh, activate it. So, so that's a uh, third thing that you like about it. Uh, and finally, one of the you know part of my elevator speech is uh, four things. So that's the first three things. The last thing would be the fact that you can. Um, you can interface this with just about anything you need to interface it with. So, you know, if you have um, if you have an electric strike to release, if you have latch retraction, uh, like a motorized type latch retraction that you're going to interface it with, uh, if you have um, a mag lock that you have to energize and de-energize. Um, a keypad that goes with it, a receiver because of um, you know you're using uh, wireless uh, uh, switches. It, it can handle any and all of those things, and there's 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 all kinds of um, all kinds of terminals for interfacing, and we'll kind of get to that later. I'll show you that, and, and we'll kind of go over a little bit of that. But uh, so it's a very um, it's a very sophisticated unit. But it can be very simple for installation, also. So, so anyway, those are the main features with the operator. Let's talk a little bit about. Let's talk a little bit about the, uh, you know, some of the other um, features with the operator. Uh, one of the things that you should be aware of is mechanically, it's a it's a cam and roller type mechanism, kind of like our. Uh, TS-93 door closer. So it's a, it's a very efficient manual mechanical type of a, a closer. And then you have the ability of course then to automate it and have the door powered open. But when you just use the door as a, as a door closer, you know, people don't even realize it's an operator. So, and that's because it's a cam and roller type product. So, um, so that is a uh, Kind of unique in this in this segment. So, uh, one of the other things that's kind of unique is the fact that there's no oil in this operator. Okay, everything's electromechanical. So we've had you know operators in the past that utilize door closers, and the reason you do that is because it it feels like a door closer in a manual mode. But um, the weak point. The failure point was always the door closer itself. So, um, so in this design, we we eliminated that possibility altogether. So, I can assure you this will never leak because there's no oil in it. So that's uh, for durability and long-term reliability. That's a big plus. Uh, some other uh, features are it has an amp and a half power supply that you can utilize for those accessories for the, um, you know, for magnets and strikes and keypads and mag locks and uh, latch retractions, all those sorts of things. An amp and a half should be plenty for just about anything that you, um, that you come across. So it's an amp and a half at 24 volts DC and, and it is filtered and regulated so it's good clean power and you can use that for any of those door accessories. So, so that's, uh, that'll save you, um, 
it saves you complexity in the, in the wiring, and the other thing it can do is save you the cost of a separate power supply. You don't have to uh, buy the separate power supply. So, so that's all um, standard features with the uh, ED50LE. So. Uh, something else we should talk about is the operator itself is a, uh, there's only one operator. So if it's a right hand, left hand, uh, pull side, push side, whichever it is, it, it, there's only one unit. And then it's just a matter of how it's installed and then what arm you put with it and then how it's programmed. So from a uh, part stocking uh, perspective, there's, there's only one only one spare part that's going to be necessary. So, uh, so that's a very clever design that's, that's uh, incorporated into it. Something else um, that is unique with the product is the spindle length. So, um, yeah, Paul, show, this, show the operator. Yes, so look at that. That particular operator has a spindle extension of about 20 millimeters or three quarters of an inch. But that spindle extension uh, can be removed or we have other spindle extensions that are 30 millimeters or 60 millimeters um, and that's just dependent on you know your door and frame profiles and where you decide you want to mount the unit. Um, you can utilize any or or, or none of those uh, spindle extensions. So, um, so it makes it very adaptable as far as you know how it can be installed on the door and frame. So, so that's those are uh, very cool features. Um, uh, also, it has a built-in fire alarm interface, so you can um, tie it into the fire alarm system. Uh, have the door deactivate when the fire alarm goes off, or you can use that for. You can use that for uh, assisted living, where you have maybe a wander guard system, um, Alzheimer's uh, you know, wing, that type of a thing, where they have the doors that close and lock. You can tie this into that and have this be active and have it close and, uh, and then have the magnets activated. So that's a, a standard feature that's, that's part of the unit too. Uh, we've got um, a full-time hold open on there, so you can set this to uh, open in the morning and just and stay open indefinitely all day. Uh, it's designed for that, and you can uh, you can easily do that, and it's not going to hurt it uh, whatsoever. Um, some other features: it has a, a cycle counter that's built in, so you can see how many cycles are on it since it was reset, and that's in. 10,000 cycle increments. Uh, so that's a nice feature. It has a, uh, it has a service indicator on it. So after a year or, um, or 200,000 cycles, the service indicator will illuminate and it will be an amber LED on there and you can, um, you can then uh, know that it's been a year since it was uh, reset or 200,000 cycles since it was reset and then um, you know it's basically just an indicator for the end user to to give you a call and say hey you know I got this yellow indicator and it's uh, it's nothing really wrong with the unit but it's just um, a reminder that it's time to take a look at the opening and make sure the components are tight make sure the door is functioning properly and that sort of thing so that's that's a standard um, product that's built into it uh, something else that's in there is a, a self-diagnostic feature. So if you have a, um, if you have any issues, uh, the door was locked when it shouldn't have been locked, uh, things of that nature, there's going to be a code that's set off. The, um, the unit will tell you what, uh, what the problem was. You can go in the, in the manual, look up the code, and figure out what the problem was. It just helps make it a lot easier to go back, diagnose, and, uh, and do the repair process. So again, these are all standard features, things you don't have to order, um, special things you don't have to order in addition to. Uh, some other features. Let's talk about uh, the unit can be a, uh, a push or pull type mount. We mentioned that before. On the push side, we can do a reveal depth up to 18 inches. So the standard unit goes up to 8 inches of reveal depth. The, uh, the optional arm goes up to 18 inches of reveal depth. So you know you have quite a range of throat sizes that you can mount this unit on and adapt the arm to. Um, now on the other side of the door for a pull side mount, for a track mount, 
uh, we can go up to two and three quarter inches uh, reveal on the pull side uh, and have the door pulled open with a slide arm type of a uh, application. So again, um, very, very um, adaptable as far as what types of doors and frames you can install this on. Uh, we can also we can also use the track arm to push the door open if you have an application where you don't want the double lever arm sticking out on the push side. You just want to push the door open with a track. We can do that too. Kind of limits your degree of opening um, and your reveal depth comes into play, but uh, it certainly is you know doable and and uh, can be done with a standard unit without having to you know order something special. It's just a matter of templating and programming. So now uh, let's talk about cover lengths. Okay. So this particular unit here that we have on the door is a 34 inch cover. So that's a standard length cover uh, that you would come across, but you can get those covers as short as 27 inches and you can get them as long as 48 inches. So if you want to um, you know, have the full length cover that goes across all the way across the head, you can do that. If you want to just have a, um, you know, as, as short a unit as possible, you can get it with a 27-inch cover and, and um, uh, just make it appear that much more compact. So um, now we also do uh, paired units. So Paul, are you ready to go over here and look at the paired units? So we have, um, okay, on this on this opening here. Um, it's 3070 pair of doors, and, uh, and we have one cover that goes all the way across, and um, we will ask you in a situation like this, we'll ask you what the hinge pin to hinge pin dimension is, and, uh, and then we'll cut the cover the appropriate length. And then in addition to giving you a cover, that's one piece, we'll give you a, um, we'll give you a communication cable to tie the two units together. We'll give you a power cable so that you only run wires to one unit and then we give you cables to power the other unit and we give you, um, we give you the communication cables so that when you activate the main unit, the secondary unit will uh, be sequenced. So it just makes that installation that much easier, plus it, uh, it keeps the doors in sync. The doors are always going to be in sync. So. Um, and then we also have an additional version of that that would be a, a powered unit and a uh, just a manual unit, but it's still under one cover. Okay, so uh, so we call it a companion unit. But again, we'll ask you the same kinds of questions where, you know, the hinge pin to hinge pin dimension. We'll cut the cover for you, and then um, we give you all of the um, adaptive uh, materials and brackets and whatnot to it to put the door closer on the other side. You still use the same kind of an arm. So aesthetically the two are uh, the two sides are, are totally balanced. So so that's an option that you have um, with the ED uh, 50 LE. Okay. Um, let's talk about let's talk about some of the programming options that you can do with the uh, the 50 LE. Of course, you can, uh, you can adjust your opening speeds and your closing speeds. You can adjust your opening forces and your closing forces independent of each other. And, uh, and you, can, you can fine tune those, but never, you can never take it outside of the, um, the low energy operator parameters. Okay, so you don't have to worry about you know, somebody um, you know, making the door open too fast or with too much force. We don't let you do that. We don't let you exceed the parameters. Uh, you have a, a standard um, delay time that you can program in for releasing strikes or retracting latches up to four, uh, up to four seconds. And you can do that in one-tenth of a second increments. So that's a feature that's their standard. And there's a relay uh, integrated into it. That's a standard feature. Um, we can also set the door to pull in before it opens out when it's doing that delay so that if you have an electric strike 
and you have um, you know a, a pressure on the on the keeper plate you can have the operator remove that pressure keeper plate releases then the door opens out again standard features it's just a matter of uh, activating or, or, or not activating those types of uh, uh, types of features so it's all in the programming uh, of course you can adjust the the hold open time once it achieves the, the max opening that you set it for um, but you can also do a um, you can do a, a manual delayed action so if you walk through the door manually push the door open uh, you can set it so that it will stay open well, up to 30 seconds from where, the, where you open the door to I usually like to set it somewhere around three seconds it's just gives you enough time to take a couple steps, get out of the opening, and then let the door close behind you. So that's, a, again, a standard feature. Um, there's an electronic back check that's built into it. Okay, so when you open the door manually, the door would uh, slow, generally slows down 10 degrees prior to the max opening setting, but you can adjust that to be up to 40 degrees prior to the max opening setting. So if you have a wide door, a heavy door, um, door that opens against a 90 degree obstacle, you know, maybe you want to increase that back check. You have the ability to do that. So, uh, again, these are all standard features and it's just a matter of how you want to adjust the operator to, um, to make it behave. Um, what else do we have? We have a uh, full-time latch retraction. So that function would be like in a, in a hospital where you have surface vertical rods and every time you walk through the door or activate the door, those surface vertical rods have to activate. And it's a lot of clanging and banging. And what you can do is set this so that those latches retract one time and stay retracted. And then uh, will stay retracted all the time until the fire alarm input opens and then the latches throw. Um, it saves a lot of wear and tear on latch retraction. It saves a lot of noise. Um, and it's a standard feature that you can enable uh, in the programming of the operator. Uh, what else can you do? Push and go function. So if you, if you have a situation where the buttons aren't in a convenient location or there's nowhere to put a button or it's just you know not practical, you can set it for push and go. So that would be where you would uh, move the door the first inch and then the operator takes off and activates and opens the door fully times out and closes behind you. So that's a standard feature that's built into the operator also. You can also set this up to be primarily a door closer or primarily an automatic door. Either way, there's two different modes um, that you can set this up in. And if it's set up to be a door closer, um, one of the major differences between those two uh, setups is uh, in the closing cycle, if it's set up as a door closer and hits an obstacle, it'll just put the amount of pressure that the spring tension generates against the obstacle. And in automatic mode, if it hits an obstacle in the closing cycle, it'll reopen. So whatever the customer desires as far as how they prefer the, the door to work, you know, we have the ability to do it either way, just, uh, just as a programming, uh, programming issue. So. Um, Okay, let's talk a little bit about the differences uh, between the operators that we have available. We, up to this point, we talked about um, the ED50LE, and we also have something called an ED100LE that's in that family. So let's take a look at the, uh, what the ED50LE looks like. Uh, let's pull the cover off of here. Okay, so, okay, the ED50LE, let's just take a look at this. I'll pull this ribbon cable off of here so you can get a better, better look at the operator. The main differences between the, the ED50LE and the uh, ED100LE is, is the motor itself, okay? So if you take a look at this motor, uh, this particular style of motor has a motor brake on the end. Okay, there's, a, there's an electric clutch on the end of this motor and that comes into play when back check is, is needed. It also comes into play with the hold open, uh, hold open uh, function. The clutch 
the electric clutch would be energized. So that's uh, uh, 50 LE, and the reason we have this type of motor on this operator is to make it feel as much like a door closer in a manual mode as possible. That's the reason you have the, uh, this type of motor and that type of a clutch set up on it, okay? Now, uh, we also have a um, ED100 LE, and I just happen to have one of those installed on this door over here. Okay. So we, we, um, we have an ED100 LE on this, on this opening over here. So, uh, so the ED100 LE, you can see this motor is a lot, um, a lot different from the motor on the 50 LE. Okay? This is a bigger motor diameter. There's no, there's no clutch assembly on this motor. And this motor um, can generate more power. So if you have a situation where it's an exterior door, it sees a lot of wind, or it's a, a heavier door, or it's a door that uh, um, has to fight uh, magnetic weather stripping, or it's a sound seal door, or something of that nature. The ED100 LE with the bigger motor would be a better, um, a better product for that type of an application because it can actually generate more power to make the door um, to make the door move in the first place. So, so anyway, the, that is the major differences between the, um, the 50 and the 100. Other than that, um, they install the same, they program the same, and um, you know, the interfaces are the same, everything else is, is pretty much the same. So um, it's just a matter of if you're going exterior and it's gonna see a lot of wind, Maybe the 50 would be a good choice, or the 100 would be a good choice. If it's interior and you want it to be as um, door closer-like feeling as possible with the manual opening, then the 50 is uh, definitely the way to go, okay? All right, um, let's do, let's see. Let's talk about, I think this would be a good time to talk about the, um, the touchless actu actuators, what do you think? Okay, well, well let's do that. Now the whole concept behind the touchless opening, of course the operator is going to do the operation, it's going to make the door move, but something has to activate it. So we have a series of standard activators and we have a, that you, normal buttons that you would touch and depress, uh, but of course now we're trying to promote and, and have available the touchless option. So uh, we have quite a few varieties of touchless switches available. And, uh, and I want to show you what we have available here. So, um, so the first touchless version that we have available is the 910 series. So the 910 series is a, is a touchless switch. It's a capacitive sensing type switch. It would fit over a single gang box, and it's basically made to fit over uh, and cover up a single gang box. And then you have, you can see the varieties that you have available as far as the icons go on there. But they all operate the same way. You would, ha you would uh, wave your hand in front of it. Uh, the range is around two inches or so, and you can adjust that range. Um, and the whole idea is that you don't have to touch a switch and, um, and it's going to activate the unit for you. Uh, this gives you an idea of what the, um, what the wiring diagrams would be. So on this 910 touchless switch, you need, um, you need four wires, four conductors, two for power, and then two for your, um, for your signal to activate the operator. So if you're going to go this route, uh, you're going to have to pull a four conductor wire, usually 18 gauge is just fine, but that conductor would go between the, um, between the switch and the operator. So, uh, so that's something you have to be aware of. Uh, the next series of switches that we have is the 946 and the 950 series, uh, and these, are, these can go on a single gang box, 
but they're, they're also, the, the back plates are designed so that they can screw onto a, a double gang box too. But again, it's the same kind of a concept where, um, where you're gonna have to run cable from the operator to the, um, to, to the, to the box where the switch is. And on these switches, uh, you really should have a five, you should have a five conductor cable going from the switch to the operator. These like to have an earth ground in addition to the standard ground. Um, so j just keep that in mind. If you go with this type of a switch, you should run a five conductor cable from the switch box to the operator. Okay. Yeah, and that gives you, there's an idea of what the wiring would look like. And you would basically provide the wire from that isolation module to the operator. So that shows six conductor on there, but you generally don't use a normally open and a normally closed in the same application. So you're probably going to use one or the other. For our operator, you're just going to use the uh, normally open and the common there. So five conductors would get, uh, would get you enough conductors there. Okay, but then there's another option that you might consider doing, and that would be the wireless, touchless wireless option. So that's our 912 series. So on, the, on this type of a setup, um, there's going to be a, a receiver that, uh, that goes up under the cover, and that's going to have four conductors on it, so two for power and two for signal. And then what you do is you pair that with um, the buttons, so you can pair that with a, a well, way more buttons than you would ever need on any particular opening. Um, but uh, these transmitter buttons have uh, the big square version has uh, three double A's in it. The smaller square, uh, like the narrow style, that goes on an inch and three quarter uh, vertical aluminum member, uh, that has two. Uh, double A's in it, and then you have a narrow one, the black one there in the center. That's a narrow, thin button um, that's made to basically apply to hard surface tile or or even onto glass, and uh, and then that would take three uh, AAA batteries in it. So you know when you go this route, of course it's easier to do the um, the installation, um, but it, then you have the additional maintenance of you know, somebody has to make sure that the batteries are, um, you know, are up to date. So it's an additional, um, you know, maintenance step that you have to consider. So, um, yeah, that's good, Paul. Yeah. Let's look at the wiring, the, the terminal blocks for the wiring, okay? So, um, so this, this shows you what's under the cover, what terminal blocks you have available to, uh, to terminate your wires to and the types of, uh, of uh, inputs and outputs that you have. So as you can see, you've got, uh, um, starting in the, in the top left, you've got the, um, the fire alarm input. So, um, so as long as that is connected, oh, I'm sorry, no, that's the wet, uh, that's the wet contact. I can't see this far. Oh yeah, that's a wet contact. Okay, the upper, upper left is the wet contact, so if you have like a phone system um, that puts out 24 volts, you can use that input there to activate the, uh, activate the unit. To the right of that is the uh, exterior and interior inputs, so those would be the typical landing spots for the, uh, the normal buttons, um, the activation of the normal buttons, interior and exterior. And then, in addition to that, you have the um, you have the inputs for the, uh, the presence sensors, the safety sensors on the push and the pull side. Now, normally, in a um, in a uh, let's say a, a um, standard low energy setting with a knowing act button, you wouldn't use those. But you might want that in situations where you know the hold open time you really can't determine a, a, a good consistent hold open time because there might be you know wheelchairs or, or people in gurneys or something of that nature so in those situations you might want to use a presence sensor to hold the door open as long as people are in the opening um, and then you can also uh, that presence sensor would also act as a safety to prevent the door from opening if somebody were in front of the door so but the technology and the software is all there it's ready it's ready to be used if you want to use that uh, um, in addition now, Paul, you're, you're getting a little ahead of me here. 
<laughs> there you go. Okay, now across the bottom, we have the, uh, the fire alarm inputs uh, on the left-hand side. So that would be, um, as long as that contact is closed, then the, the operator will be functional. As soon as that opens up, um, an open door would close, and a closed door wouldn't take a trigger. Uh, and then to the right of that, you also have a night bank function. So if you wanted to use this for let's say a, um, an atrium setup where you need fresh air uh, return for a fire uh, exhaust system. That's what it's generally used for. We have separate inputs there to activate the door for that type of a function. And then you also have the ability to, to do all the program switch functions remotely and that's what the terminal block is to the right uh, or pretty much in the center there. Uh, you can do your automatic mode, your, your full-time hold open mode, you can do uh, exit only function with the, uh, with the program switch, you can all do that remotely. And then finally on the right hand side at the bottom you have a, a door position switch. You have a relay there, a common, normally open, normally closed. Then you can program that door position switch to change state when the door is either in the closed position or when it reaches the uh, the fully open position and you can use that for you know whatever you want to use it for uh, security camera or you can integrate that into your uh, access control system or whatever whatever you choose to do okay uh, now uh, now Paul you can uh, advance thank you so much uh, so let's talk about the kit that um, HL Flake stocks. So they have a, um, a special kit that includes the ED50LE door operator like, like we have on this door uh, in the studio here. And then in addition to that uh, operator, you have, a, uh, you have a pair of the 912 touchless switches are in there. You have the mounting boxes uh, surface mounting boxes for those 912 switches. So you can put them in, you know, recess uh, boxes in the wall, or if you don't have that, you can put them right in, a, in the provided uh, surface mount single gang boxes. And it's all, it's all in there as a kit. Um, so that's, that's one of the standard uh, options that HL Flake has in stock. So they have uh, they have it in the aluminum color, they have it in the Doronautic color, uh, and then they have the push side version of it and the pull side version of it. And again, those are pretty much complete kits. The only thing you really need to add to those is the wire that goes between the uh, activators and the, uh, and the operator. Um, so that's something, and, and, and actually those are a, a very it's a really great value for what you're getting. Um, so that's something you should look into if you ever have the opportunity to do um, any of this uh, uh, touchless uh, automation. It's, uh, it it makes, it, makes it easy on you. Uh, now, I know you're locksmiths out there and I know you're going to want to um, see how this operator works and how the programming works. And you've come to the right place because I'm prepared to show you. Okay, so um, let's talk about how the unit programs. You see, you got four four buttons on here, and you have an LED readout. So all of the program features, any of the options that you want to change, it's all done through these four buttons here. Okay, so if you want to get into program mode, what you do is push and hold the right hand button for three seconds and then that then program mode will pop up and then once you're in program mode any feature any variable that you want to change you can just scroll through and find that feature and then well let's just find a feature here this is speed opening okay so let's uh, speed opening so you push the right hand button to see what the default setting is and this one happens to be 25 degrees per, uh, per second uh, of, of opening angle. And if we wanted to change that, uh, we can slow that down or speed that up, uh, as, but we won't be able to speed it up to a point where it won't go out of the ANSI standard. It won't let you do that. But let's just say we wanted to slow that down. Let's just take it down to, 
eh, 15 degrees per second, let's say. So I find the 15 degrees per second, I hit the right hand button again and it stops flashing. And then uh, once I hit the back button, that setting has changed. So now I can, I can activate this and the door is going to open that much slower. Okay, and that's how you change all the settings. So if you want to change opening force, closing forces, hold open times, uh, activate any of these features that we talked about, that would be the process to go through and do all that. Okay, so it's very simple, and and once you get uh, once you do it a couple times and get familiar with it, it's very quick. Okay, but now let's say um, let's say you wanted to. Um, reprogram the unit. Let's say somebody installed the unit and uh, you're coming to service it at a later date and you don't know how the initial person set it up. It's no problem. You can erase all the settings and clear it and start over again. So um, let's do that. Okay. Let me get a little bit closer here. Okay. So if you want to er erase the entire um, and erase the entire program in there and start from scratch. It's fairly easy to do. What you first want to do is on the side of the unit here you have you have program switches. Okay, the three position program switch and a two position program switch. So the three position to program switch when it's in the number one setting that's that's in automatic mode, and when it's in the center that's in off mode and when it's on number two that would be full-time hold open um, but it, when you want to reset the uh, the programming you put the uh, program switch in the off setting okay that's what you do first and then uh, what you want to do at, after that is push and hold the bottom button for eight seconds okay so we're just gonna keep this depressed for eight seconds and voila, we just erased everything. So now you'll see factory setup, ED50. And when these lines are going up and down, you push the bottom button and that will make sure that the buttons are oriented correctly and up is up and down is down and right is right and left is left. Okay. So when you do that, then you'll get a P with a circle going around and that tells you, okay, we need to program the unit and this is how it would be when you first get it out of the box. So, um, so anyway, let's, uh, let's program the unit. And uh, to get into program mode, you push and hold the right button. And voila, we're in program mode. So the first thing we need to do is tell the unit if it's a push or a pull side. So this unit happens to be a push side. Um, so we push the right button to see what the default setting is. It's zero, which actually uh, is for a pull side. So we want to change that to a push side. And I push the up button to get it to one. Hit the right hand button again. It stops flashing. Now I've changed the setting. And I hit the back button to get into the program mode again. Go to the down button to get the next parameter. That's going to be the reveal depth. And the reveal depth defaults to flush, zero. But on this we have, what, about four and three quarters of an inch. Uh, so we're going to hit the right hand button again. And now, the, now the, it flashes. And now I'm going to take this up to a value of 10, which is good for four and three quarter inch reveal. Uh, then I hit the back button again, go down to RB, RB is a door width, and the initial setting is 10, that's for a 39 inch door, this is a 36 inch door. So I hit the right hand button again, it flashes, I take it down to 09, hit the right hand button again, stop flashing, I just change that setting. Okay. Now I hit the back button twice, and now I got a zero with a circle going around, and that's telling me it's time to do a learn cycle. Okay, so to initiate the learn cycle, because it must get, feel the weight of the door and, uh, and you have to set the max opening and that sort of thing, um, we, we're going to let it do a learn cycle. So to initiate that, we push and hold the bottom button until it changes state. And now the door will pull in, find out where the zero position is, and then it's going to open out. And it's going to open to about um, 70 degrees or so. 
and it's going to stop and it's going to wait for you to then open the door as far as you would normally want it to open. So I'm just going to push on the arm here and open it to about 90 degrees or so. And the door will stay there. And then you hit the bottom button again to accept that position. And then the door is going to open and close a couple times and get a feel for the weight and the mass of the door. And it, and when it's doing this, you don't want to interrupt the door because you know it's 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 trying to figure out how heavy the door is and and the resistance on a normal opening. So if somebody has to go through the door while you're doing this, you'll get an error code and you'll just have to start the process over again. Not a big deal. You just lose a little bit of time. So it's going to open all the way again. It's going to come closed and it's going to jerk because it's going to check a uh, dynamic motor brake function. It's going to jerk like that. And then it's going to come closed. And in a perfect world, uh, we're going to get two horizontal lines. And it is a perfect world. And the door is now learned. And now it's ready to be operational. So at this point, um, we put it back into, into automatic mode. Let's do this. Let's do that. Put it back into automatic mode, and now, uh, now the activators will be um, operational. So the first cycle after you power it up is always slow to make sure that you know nobody's in the arc of the door. And it's going to come close. It's going to check that motor brake adjustment again one time. So it's going to jerk right there. Then it comes closed. And now from this point forward, it would be the normal um, default speeds and forces. Okay? So that's how, that's how simple the, the programming is. So we just took this door, erased everything on it, and started over again. So now you're at a point where um, you know, your speeds and forces and all uh, time delays, all that's set to the default settings, which is probably satisfactory for, you know, 80% of the people out there. But if you wanted to go in now and change your uh, opening speeds and closing speeds, forces, delay times, add delay range for um, uh, latch retractions, that sort of thing, you, you can go and do all that. That's not a problem. Um, but just know that there's about 50 different settings that you can adjust, but really uh, you have to tell it what side of the door it's on, uh, what the reveal depth is, and what the width of the door is. Those are the three things you have to tell it, and then from that point forward, the default settings will probably be just fine. But if you want to go in and tweak it, you can tweak it to your heart's content. So. So that's uh, basically how the programming works. Um, installation is, is quick and easy. The unit separates from the, uh, from the base plate and you can, um, you can separate that and then you mount the base plate, uh, put the unit back in place, hook up the 110 volts uh, to the, to the uh, connector that's, that we give you. The other end of the connector plugs into the operator and that's how your 110 is done. And then it's just a matter of pulling wires to your switches or if it's a, a transmitter, it's just uh, hooking up the receiver. So it's, it's really that quick. So, um, so anyway, uh, you know, as, as far as being able to uh, take a standard opening and convert it into uh, a touchless opening, it's really not a lot more complicated than installing a, a big door closer. Uh, and then it's just a matter of how you want to activate it. Okay. So we've made it as easy as we possibly can. Um, and really, it's something that, uh, as a locksmith, you, you probably want to take advantage of because there's a lot of um, there's a lot of money that people will invest to make this all happen, and, uh, and this is one of the best ways to do it. Uh, there's certainly going to be cheaper ways to do it, but there aren't any better ways to do it. So, so anyway, that's um, pretty much what I have for the um, for the ED50LE and the touchless uh, activators, and. Uh, 
The only other things that you have to be aware of if you're considering doing this is to know the um, is to know the opening that you're putting it on. Um, if there's a latch involved, you're going to have to either retract the latch or you're going to have to put electric strike in there and release the keeper plate. Um, either one, so just be aware of that. Just know that that's an additional um, you know, function that you're going to have to perform, but the operator is, itself is quite capable of handling um, the timing of that and handling the power for, for powering that. Um, but it is a, uh, it's, a, it's an extra step that you have to figure in uh, when, it, when it comes time to do it. Uh, now this particular opening here, this is just push-pull. So um, at this point you would be done with this opening. Um, other openings that have cylindrical locks on or mortise locks, you know, it gets a little bit more complicated uh, with the strikes. Uh, or exit devices, you can either retract the latch on the exit device uh, with a motorized latch retraction, or maybe it's just simpler to do the uh, simpler to do the uh, strike release with the uh, exit device. It just just depends on the application and the door and frame you're working on. So, so those are some things to think about. Uh, where's an appropriate place to use this? Um, uh, certainly, any bathroom door would be an appropriate place. Uh, exterior doors on most commercial facilities, like. Um, Oh, like uh, assisted living uh, centers, uh, schools, um, in, inside hospitals. Most exterior doors on hospitals probably have automation already in place with sliding doors. That's generally what you see. Um, in business, uh, you know, you can uh, uh, open the doors without having to touch things. If you have access control, okay, you already have a card fob or, or a reader or a keypad or something that's already controlling the access on that opening, this would be a great enhancement then to open the door for you after you unlock the door, which, you know, that, that is already something that's in place. So, um, so you have a lot of uh, places where you can use this. Basically, what we're asking is a door that's 48 inches wide or less and a door that's 220 pounds or less is the typical um, parameters that we like to work within. And as long as you're um, within that size and weight, I, I feel comfortable that uh, this, will, this will definitely get the job done. Um, again, if it's interior, the, the 50 LE is, is for sure going to be fine. Um, if it's exterior, then maybe you might want to keep in mind the uh, 100 LE uh, as that has the, you know, the more powerful motor that's uh, associated with it. So, um, so anyway, um, that's the low energy operators in a nutshell. Um, in an hour or less, I think we covered that. I don't know if we have any questions, if anybody has any specific questions or any, uh, any application questions or any installation questions. Now's a good time to ask them. If you have a situation where you think you might want to use it, you can always take pictures of it and email it to me. I'm always glad to look at um, you know, any, any application issues and, or, or, or questions and let you know, yep, this is a good candidate for, um, you know, for these operators or no, maybe, um, you know, you might want to look at uh, uh, putting a sliding door or something like that in place. Um, so, so anyway, um, do we have any questions, Paul? Well, we have a couple questions, but um, our good colleague in, Cor uh, in Houston, Corby, Corby? Uh, was able to answer that, so I think we're good there. Well, so. Corby's a sharp guy. He's, there's not much you can get past Corby. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So he's, he's one of the sharpest guys we have. But if anybody else has any questions, feel free to unmute yourself by pressing the space bar, and you can also just tell Chris or ask Chris right here, or you can type it here in the chat room, and we'll take a look at it. That's right, that's right. Hmm? I must have done a perfect job covering everything because there's absolutely no questions. Yes, so. you did, Chris. You All did right. a great job. All right. Well, anyway, thanks. Oh, we do have one oh, question. Oh, Came oh, in. Oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Here we go. Okay. Do you offer reference videos just in case we get stuck in a pickle while in the field? If you're in a pickle in the field, I don't know if I have a video to get you out of that, but... Uh, <laughs> Um, actually, there is an installation video that's on the website. Um, now, that would be referencing an ED900, but as far as the um, pr process goes and the programming and, um, and, and, and actually the overall installation, that's, 
that would be one and the same. So there is an installation video. It's on dharmacaba.com under um, low energy operators, but it'll be under the uh, ED900 side of it, which is a sister product to the ED50. But the process and the programming is, is identical. So, um, so maybe we can send you a link to that later on too. I can, I can find that and send that to you. Okay. Are there any other questions? Yes, no, maybe so? Everybody hey, Chris. Oh, there you go. There we oh. go. Hey, this is uh, Corby. I just want to thank you for all of your wonderful efforts this week uh, while you were here, and also you did an amazing job on this presentation today, sir. Oh, well, well thank you, Corby. You know, I'm more than just a pretty face. You know, I can. <laughs> yes, I, you are. <laughs> there's substance to me, too, you know. <laughs> No, thanks for being here. Thanks for uh, giving us the time, giving us the opportunity. Um, you know, I think if you're considering getting into the uh, the business of, of uh, providing touchless uh, touchless openings, you know, HL Flake has a great kit that utilizes the 50LE and two wireless or wired touchless buttons, and uh, and that's probably a great place to start to uh, to get your feet wet in. Uh, and getting into the touchless uh, openings business, so so give it a give it a whirl. It's uh, certainly nothing to be afraid of, and it can be a great uh, great profit center for you. So okay, well thanks for being here. Appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you next time from the wonderful studios here at Dormacaba. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>